Good afternoon, ladies and gents. It's Simon Brown here doing today's uh, webinar. And uh, perhaps by pure dint of fate, we're doing emerging markets, looking at different ways where we can invest in emerging markets uh, via the JSC. Very important that we investing via the JSC. There are four particular products aimed at it, uh, one from Deutsche Bank, sorry, three from Deutsche Bank, one from Standard Bank, exchange traded notes. We'll obviously talk around those. Um, pros and cons is exactly where they fit and the like. If you've got questions, you can uh, throw them into the question box as we're going along. I'll answer them. If they pop up and they're immediately relevant, we'll take them or I'll hold them until the end. And we've certainly got a Q&A session for the end. Today's webinar should be relatively short, uh, fairly easy concept. And I'm going to start with, uh, very simply, let's first define what a, a uh, emerging market is. Um, did a whole bunch of digging last night, and it, it broadly comes up, nation's social or business activity in the process of rapid growth and industrialization. And when we say emerging markets, we talk China, we talk India, we absolutely understand that. Uh, we can talk much of Africa, much of South America, fair parts of, of, of Asia, although perhaps we could argue that they, they, they're beyond the emerging market um, in the sense that their rapid growth has slowed. But China, India with growth uh, up around the 8 or 10 percent GDP growth, certainly they qualify. So that rapid industrialization that, that to me is critically important and really defines it as a emerging market. Of course, South Africa is an emerging market. Uh, certainly we don't have growth at, at that sort of levels, um, but we are seeing rapid growth. We've seen that process of it. We've seen that the social and business uh, side of the country changing quite rapidly, and that's an important point. If you want to invest in, in, in an emerging market, South Africa is an emerging market, so by definition the JSC is, and therefore so are JSC stocks. In other words, if you went and bought uh, Standard Bank, who obviously are in South Africa and Africa, you've got emerging market exposure. Uh, same would be true if you went and bought ShopRite, uh, MassMart. Of course, if you went and bought Billiton, uh, yes and no, because they're not exclusively South Africa, although you know, a lot of their earnings are coming from South America at the same time. Um, and then they've got some Australian earnings as well. And I would say Australia, not really an emerging market in the true sense, although their growth is certainly attractive. Point being is that we can go and buy shares on our market, which, which perhaps we hadn't thought of, that would technically qualify as getting ourselves some emerging market Exposure. But I'm looking here at uh, non-South Africa. Let's look beyond our borders, direct emerging market. Four products. They are exchange-traded notes, uh, ETNs as we call them. They're very much like ETFs. There's a couple of them. Well, there's one key distinction which is important to note right up front. With an ETF, the issuer, be that Standard Bank, Deutsche Bank, or whoever, physically go and buy the shares or whatever the underlying asset is, and in essence, ring fence it for you. So you take pure risk of that underlying asset. The ETN, they're not required to. An ETN is basically a note that says they promise to pay you the return on the particular underlying asset, as it, whatever it might be, over the time frame that you've held it. In other words, what you're doing is you're taking some counterparty risk. Now, to me, it's quite simple. If Standard Bank or Deutsche Bank are going bust, I think we've got bigger worries than our, our portfolios and our ETN holdings. Uh, we we'll probably find that it, we're going back to sort of Mad Max sort of days, end of the world as we know it, etc. But certainly it's worth pointing out that they don't physically have to buy the underlying. They're giving you that promise to give you that profit. There are market makers. In other words, you trade at fair value. Do be careful in that point. Uh, check that the market maker is there. You can typically see them because they're in big volumes um, and they're typically only there from 10 past 9 until 10 to 5 uh, during the course of the day. They're not there the first and the last 10 minutes. They are JC listed, so you can buy them via your normal stockbroker. You can also buy them from a website like uh, Mike Brown's ETFSA, um, or else you just buy them as you would any other share because they're JC listed. There's a three from Deutsche Bank. There's one from Standard Bank. And the last point on these particular products is they are what we call total return. In other words, you're not going to receive a dividend. The dividend is immediately reinvested back in, so you get the benefit in that the value of the unit will increase, but you don't get the benefit in the sense that you get cash every quarter or every six months, like you would with a Satrix ETF or something like that. So they are total return indices in that space. 
So let's drill into the four of them. Uh, first one from Standard Bank. It's the uh, oldest of them. Came out earlier this year in March. The code is SBAEI. It stands for Standard Bank Africa Equity Index, which is a proprietary index. In other words, they've put this index together. They are, are hoping that in time it will become more popular, much like the, the, the other indices that we have. But for now, it's a proprietary index. And at listing, it, it covered 23 countries 173 stocks. Now, I'll be honest, when I saw it, I kind of hoped that it would be sort of a top 40, 40 stocks around Africa. 173 gives serious dilution. Your big exchanges being uh, Egypt, being Nigeria, Kenya, are, you, are your big exchanges there. They have capped exchanges so that no single exchange can be more than 20% of the index. And what they would do is a stock that is perhaps, say it's a, 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 and I can't think of an example, but it, say it's a Kenyan stock, um, but it might also trade on the London exchange. They might go buy the London version of it. They don't necessarily need to buy the Kenyan version. Remember, it would be the same company, just trading on different exchanges, and it being a, an ETN, they're saying, we will give you the return. How they manage that return is up to their risk department. A very important point is that South Africa is not included. So this is Africa excluding South Africa. And to me, that's quite an attraction. Uh, we can get South Africa. And, and if we included South Africa in the index, I would worry that it would overwhelm the index. Um, and we'll touch on that when we get to the Deutsche Bank one. So 23 African countries excluding South Africa. It's dominated by uh, uh, financials, uh, construction, and mining companies. That I think would be no surprise to anybody. Oh, and telecoms. Telecoms fairly big as well, particularly Kenya and uh, Egypt, Nigeria, and the like. So nice product. Uh, trades well. Got an underlying in market maker, so liquidity is not a problem there, and it's giving you uh, exposure to Africa as a continent. Moving on to the Deutsche Bank ones, um, their emerging market, and this is a, a, a general generic emerging market. So it, it's uh, tracking the, MC, the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, which includes 23 different countries. You will hear from time to time that uh, South Africa or some other country um, has been upgraded or downgraded in that particular index. As it stands right now, South Africa is around 7.5%. Uh, Brazil, Russia, India, and China make up about 50% of that index. So your 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 uh, BRIC countries, and if you bring South Africa, make it BRICS. We're looking at about 58% in those five alone, with the other 18 then making up some 42 odd percent. So you can certainly see where that weighting is. Um, and the code DBE MER. This one I like. It, it gives me a nice blend. I mean, on, on, we just had the whole meltdown with the U.S. downgrade over the weekend. Uh, Brazil was off some 8% on, on, on Monday evening. It's rallied back, but China and India were doing significantly less bad on Monday. So in my pick of them, I would say that's probably my preferred pick of the selection. The second of the Deutsche Bank ones is DBCHIN, which is the MC, MSCI China uh, index. It's about 150 Chinese companies, and I've put the actual uh, qualification there. They might be trading on the Shanghai Exchange or the Shenzhen Stock Exchange, or they might even be listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And, and that being, I mean, let's take 10 centers in this example, that is out and out a Chinese company does all its business in China, makes all its profit in China, is aimed at Chinese people, but trades in the Hong Kong exchange. So these are 150 odd Chinese companies, but they, make, they, they, they could be trading on any one of those three exchanges. And if you want the details particular to what those underlying stocks are, you could either just Google the, the MSCI China, um, or I'll give you a link to the Deutsche Bank page but they give you a lot more information. I'll give you that link towards the end of the webinar. So this really is the, the one if, if, if China's the story. You, you're interested in China, that's what your focus is, and you really, really want to get some exposure to China. Um, this is going to give you pure exposure to China, whereas the previous one, which is the emerging market one, China's a big weighting in there, but it's, it's, it's probably only a quarter of the entire index. So whereas here you've got 100% China exposure. The third one from Deutsche Bank, 
um, DBAFRI, which is obviously the Africa one. It's tracking the MSCI Africa top 50. Now, it's a capped index, and, and that's just because they're using market cap. Um, and it's, it's capped at 50 stocks only, uh, broadly across Africa. It's, uh, South Africa, though, 53% weighting, which means half of this, a little over half, is actually giving you exposure to South Africa. You've got to say to yourself, I, 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 South Africa is a big part of, of, of Africa, make no mistake. And we've got the big countries there, the Egypts, uh, Nigeria's there, Kenya. Um, Mauritius getting bigger and bigger because of their tax status. Tunisia often forgotten about, as is Morocco. So it's much narrower than the Santa Bank one. But that South Africa component, to my mind, I would think if I wanted Africa, I've, I've got my South African exposure. I would want uh, non-South African exposure rather than, than getting more South African exposure by buying the Deutsche Bank one. I suppose in a sense you could say, look, you know, we're part of it, therefore we definitely want to be involved in it. Um, there are the links, Deutsche Bank. The Standard Bank link is a terrifyingly long link. If you just went to Google and uh, Googled Standard Bank ETN or Googled the code, which is SB. AEI, you would get the relevant page for them, and Deutsche Bank is just X markets, X dash markets, dot co dot za, and you'll find the information, particularly as to what the underlyings are, when they're changing. Typically, like most indices, they will change the constituents of the underlying, if at all, on a quarterly basis, end of March, June, September, and December. Important to remember I said that they are total returns, so you're not getting dividends, those are being directly reinvested for you. The risks, well, there's that ETN risk, the taking counterparty risk. I'm quite comfortable. I think it's a negligible risk. It doesn't bother me at all. Obviously, there's currency risk. Um, you're, you're, these, these markets trade in other currencies, whether it be the Brazilian real or the, you know, whatever it might be, the Kenyan shilling. Um, ultimately, it's converted back to rands and cents on the JSC. So there is currency risk. It's also important to note that Although you're getting offshore exposure, this is not part of your offshore allowance. The Reserve Bank, SARS, gives you $4 million a year. This doesn't form part of your $4 million, so it's nice, it's easy, it's just done on, on the JSC. And of course, then a market risk, and that goes without saying, but I thought I always like to state the obvious. You know, if you've invested in, in, in the Chinese one and, and China completely tanks, well, your Chinese ETN is going to follow it down at pretty much the same rate. Also an important point in the currency, if you've noted on the China one, is that a couple of the stocks are listed in US dollars. So there's an implication there if the RAND continues stronger um, that these stocks are trading in US dollars and that could take some of that shine off any potential return in that space. Quick recap, emerging markets expected to outperform over the longer term, certainly if we look back at the last uh, year or even the last decade, emerging markets have been doing better than the emerged markets of Western Europe and, and North America. Um, even in South Africa, where our growth hasn't been so 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 wild, so so good, and we've got to sort of four, four and a half, maybe five, still doing a lot better than the rest of the world. Uh, I think, if I recall correctly, the top ten countries for for GDP growth going forward, seven of them are in Africa. And the top, t the top GDP country in the first 10 years of this millennium was Angola. Now, of course, off a very, very low base, but the point being is that emerging markets are expected to outperform. And that's notwithstanding the troubles you're seeing in Western Europe and North America. And those troubles are broadly two things, uh, sovereign debt, we saw the downgrade of the US, uh, and second to that, anemic growth. They might be growing, but they're not growing by much. In fact, they're struggling to get to 1% growth. Obviously, they're easy. You buy the ETN, uh, you get that underlying exposure, simple process, no, no complications to it. Um, you've got your four different options. There's two Africa options, as I said. My preference would be for the Standard Bank one, although I prefer their stocks, much as the Deutsche Bank one has, it's the South African exposure. I, I've got plenty of South African exposure. I'm not necessarily looking for more South African exposure. You can buy them direct via your stockbroker as you would any other asset. You could also buy them via ETFSA, who are sort of a bucket shop where you use a supermarket in sense of, of the different uh, uh, products coming through. Folks, that's the webinar. Very short and sweet, very simple. As I said, uh, perfectly well timed with the US being downgraded. Um, I've got a question coming through from Susan. She's asking which 
of the four is my preferred. As I said, if you're looking for Africa, I like the Standard Bank one, the SBAEI. If you're looking for general emerging market, I like the um, MSCI emerging market, which is the 23 emerging market countries dominated by the BRICS, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Um, China, I like, but I worry about the over-concentration in that particular space. So I would probably go for the emerging market one, the data emerging market one, as a lot of the companies that I own already on the JSC have got fairly good exposure into Africa already. If you've got any more questions, uh, just put them in the text box. Uh, if you've got a uh, microphone attached, if you raise your hand, I can activate your mic and we can take an audio question. A uh, follow-up question from Susan. She's also asking about buying them uh, directly from Standard Bank or Deutsche Bank. Standard Bank don't offer direct in terms of, of like what you would get for Satrix or ABSA. Deutsche Bank, good question. They do on their DBX trackers, so they might. Um, and I'm suspecting the reason for the question is there's a slight additional fee at ETFSA. Go to the Deutsche Bank website, uh, have a look around. I know the X trackers which cover five international markets can be bought either on lump sum or monthly debit. Um, I would imagine that they've probably added their ETNs to that as well. So it would be slightly cheaper than going to ETFSA. Simpiwe is asking about tradability of them. Uh, Simpiwe, great question. Tradability, broadly I'm going to say not a problem, and that's because there's a market maker. And what I mean by market maker is there's somebody who, the, the, the issuer, be it Deutsche Bank or Standard Bank or on the other ETF and ETN products, RMB, uh, Investec, Absa, Satrix, uh, PropTrax and the like, what they do is they get the fair value, say the fair value is 10 Rand and 80 cents. They would market make either side of that 10 Rand 80. So they would be buyers at 10.75 and sellers at 10.85 slightly wider than the fair value and that spread, that slight difference is, is, is one of the ways they're making their profit. Um, and what it means is that they're typically there in volume, uh, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, but it means as long as you trade against the market maker, you know that you're trading pretty much at fair value. So you can remove that risk of, of, of buying above or the benefit, I suppose, of buying below that fair value. So have a look, see, and if you, Market makers typically easy to spot. They're on either side. They're quite uh, close to each other in terms of the buy and sell. They're in big round amounts, and their buy and sell prices are changing. Typically, they update every 15 seconds if there is a price update in that process. Ladies and gents, I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. So nice short webinar. I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, thanks very much for attending. As always, the webinar will be up on the website uh, before lunch tomorrow. In fact, it will probably be up uh, before we go to bed this evening. Uh, thanks very much for attending. appreciate the time. Cheers.